spot color and simple graphics using half tones starting with a full color image that's going to be produced on a t-shirt now first of all just going to get the design put together and output as a formatted two color job that works in a funky style on a t-shirt now this was a t-shirt graphic but using full color which is direct to garment uh, or DTG direct to garment but this one is going to be more perhaps screen printing and using halftone it could be also done direct to garment as well but we're going to use spot color which requires only two colors not CMYK or full color so let me just go back to this illustrator file now here's the graphic I'm just putting things together and if I just come to the layers here just one layer at the moment so we're going to plonk our artwork here and if I go up to my colors here you'll see we've got a ton of colors that is in the mix here and this is all CMYK so just to start off with this first file we're going to prepare what we want and now we can use with um, these colors here but we're going to use actual spot colors so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just come up in here and I'm going to go in Illustrator and select all unused and just come down and click on the delete and I'll go yes now you might get some gray still there we're going to go through and delete these ones which um, I can just come, come over here and actually just select them and come down to delete down the bottom and they're gone. Now we're going to bring in our own unique colors here. So I just want to make some clean, good colors when we can have as any color we want, but they're going to be spot colors. So if I just come up under this drop down menu, you'll see that if we just come all the way down here, we've got things called um, spot libraries. Okay, now if I was just to drag this out, probably over here, it'll probably be a little bit clearer because I just want to make sure you can see that we've got things like other libraries down the bottom and these are all the things we look at. But the only one we really want, and of course you can have any sort of color system you want, is just called color box. And what we're going to do with this one is we've got a few out of the view here. Uh, uh, Toyo color finder and true match but that doesn't matter the ones we really want is just the Pantone solid color not CMYK but solid I'm going to stay with coated really this is for uh, on printing onto sort of smoother or glossier stock this is for printed onto sort of more textured type stock it's called uncoated but basically the color is the same I'm just going to click on solid coated colors and here what I've got now is I've got a range of colors I can work with. I'll pull this down. These are all the Pantone colors. Now I can view this by just doing a thumbnail view, but I, which you can choose from this stage. And you'll notice that these are little triangle down the bottom with a dot. This means spot color. So what I'm going to come up here is I'm just going to come down and I'm just going to choose um, just my sort by name here at, or, and just make sure that it's also just in the list, which is what I want. And this shows me it's a spot color that I'm working with solid. There's the spot. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a couple of colors. And the color that I want is I just want to get a nice yellowy color. And of course, you've got a ton to choose from. That's why it's great to have a color book. And then I want a, a deeper sort of a bluey type color. So the one that I want is probably just a nice 280. So if I come down here, which is a blue, and um, we can see all the colors in there, and around, oh, 286 is that's the one I want. So if I just click on it like so, and I move into my swatches, there it has been added. Now the other one I want, just to sort of compete with that, is, is a nice sort of a warmer color. And what I want is a Pantone, sort of a yellowy color, in this case, 109. Now you can have any colors you want and we can have more than two colors. We could have as many colors as you want for a fine, fine art piece. But just for now, just a limited a two color job. So that's great. So I can close this now and I'm just going to bring my swatches panel back in here and there's my colors. Right. I'm going to just come up and I'm just going to save this file now. And um, it has already been saved, but I'm just saving it to a location I can easily access things from. So if I was just to minimize that and minimize this, the two files I've got here, I've basically saved my file in here, and here's just currently my um, Photoshop file at the moment, just as a ping, but it's full color. It's RGB. So 
let's just go back here and bring them back here. I'm going to get this into just a very simple, I want to use a halftone screen type format, really good for doing artwork with. So I'm just going to come over to my image here. I'm going to go to mode and instead of RGB, I want to go to bitmap. Now you can't get bitmap, we have to, have to go to grayscale first. This is sort of like 8 bit plus 8 bit plus 8 bit, if you will. It's like 24 bit in a way with the, the channels and the colors. We go to, in fact, I'm just going to show you what's happening here, just in the channels. We've got C, um, RGB here, and these are the three um, channels here. If you had CMYK, that'd be four, basically, to represent each color plate. But what we're going to do over in this one is just into my image um, mode over here. And you watch what happens to the channel here. If I go to mode grayscale, I'm just going to go discard, and you see now we've only got one channel. And now that I've got that, I can come over along to my bitmap image and just click on that. And I'll go OK. And what I want, yours might not be set to 600. I'm setting it to 600 to make sure. And you've got a whole choice of different things you can use. Basically, just black and white, which is a threshold. If it's darker than 50% gray, it goes black. Lighter, it goes white. And different sorts of patterns here. But I want my halftone to create this cool halftone screen. So I'm going to go halftone screen, and I'm going to go OK. Now, I'm changing my frequency here already. I want to keep it really quite small. Normal angle is about 45. Um, now, make sure I've only got a 20 um, centimeter wide file. Don't make it too big because the screen will look quite but, um, quite small. We want to just work with a, a reasonable size. Mine is just 20 centimeters, so it's a good 300 dpi file that I started with, and just so it's not enormous in height and width. So what I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to go line. And I'm just going to stay with my line screen at the moment. These are all the things you can have. So line is going to be one, and I'll go OK. Now here's this really chunky line, and that's exactly what I want. Now, by the way, there's going to be no white in this. It's only the black, which we can color up. You see what I mean? So I'm just going to go um, File, and I'm just going to go Save As, and just fine to keep it just as a Photoshop format. And if I just go... Um, Save to my file here. Now just make sure you save to the same folder, which is really good. And um, what I also need to have to color this up properly, is it needs to be a Photoshop file. So that's uh, number one important thing in order to really play with the colors correctly, not just keep it as a ping, which is still RGB. So I'm going to call this um, trim. Actually, I'm going to just, it was already being trimmed. I'm going to call it line. And I'm just going to save that. Okay, so I'm saving in there and a Photoshop file. It's going to save that file. Now, if um, basically um, with this line file, if I was just now just to go back, in fact, I can just go back through here and I'll just come back to my open again. In fact, I can come down and make it easy myself. I'm on grayscale here and I'm just going to. Command plus, just to fit it a little bit bigger. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go um, into my mode. Seeing it's grayscale, now I can go straight to bitmap. Click on that, go OK, 600 again, halftone screen. This time I'm going to change it from the line and I'm just going to go to a round dot and I'm going to go OK. So that's cool. Okay, now I'm going to go file and I'm going to go um, just save as and onto my computer again, and I'm gonna call this one dot. So D-O-T, and there it is. So I save that in there. And great. So we're basically done and dusted for what I want. Now there's no white in this file, it's only the black, which we can recolor. Let me show you what happens here. So here's my artwork. Now if I click back on this, the first thing I wanna do is I also want my uh, layers here. So if I click on Layers, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call this Art. There it is, Art. Well, actually, I could have this Art dot, and I can do it in different layers if I wanted as well. So maybe I'm going to do this. I'm going to go Art, and I'll go, well, I'll just uh, put a line here, and I'll go Dot. So I know what I'm doing. And you can have any color for the layers you want. So that's all it is. We want to make sure that we can preview and we can also print with this. So make sure these are all on and there it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go file and I'm just going to um, place this in. 
Now it's always good to place things in properly. And let's see, we want the dot here, and I'm going to bring this in. And I'm just going to drag that to the size I want. So let's see, just to get that fitting nicely, I'm just going to drag that, and that fits in. Great. And there it is. In fact, I might just go to my black pointer tool just to move it around there, and just drag it to the position I want. Okay, that's good. Now what I want with this one is I also want to give it a color. So I'm going to do that straight away just to get that artwork together. And if I come in here and what I want to do is bring up my color. So just in the swatches up here. And now I could have both palettes out here as well. So if I just click on this and just drag that over there and just come back into my swatches there. So, just so I've got both and bring that up. I'm just going to bring that down there, nice and easy to work with. And with that selected, I'm just going to go blue. Okay, making sure that's selected, blue. And there it is. So the next file I want to put in here is my yellow one. So I'm now going to go File, Place. Now I'm going to do another layer just to keep this artwork really clean. And I'm going to call this, let's see, Art, you got it, and Dash Line, and just Return. And I'm going to place this one on. So I'm going to go File, and I'm just going to come and go Place. And let's see, I want my line file here, and I'm going to go place. So would that say when we can line it up nicely there? Now we can put things off angle as well, which can be quite cool. So there it is here, and now I'm going to just go and click on the yellow here. Okay. So let's just blow this up file up a little bit bigger at the moment. So I'm just going to Command Plus just a few times just to see it. And you might say, well, that's not looking too good. But what we want to do here is, see we've got different um, types of effects here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm not using any extra colors. Now, I am using an extra color in my artwork basic, just simply to show you that I've got a grayscale. So just to check what's going on here, I'm going to bring up just from my window, and you see Separations Preview Panel. And basically, if I click on this, and just here, and it shows you all of the colors that are being used. And if I turn any other colors off, like I'll turn CMYK off, just there, see the black line's gone, but all these other colors stay. So essentially, I, I'm just using this as a, um, a, a guide for my t-shirt at this stage. But when we're doing the artwork and you've only got limited colors, you only will have the art, and we can get rid of that other color. But I'm just going to leave that on for now. So if I turn the colors off, there it is, there's a the line. And this is a real test to make sure that you're only working with spot colors, quite separate to the swatches. So let me just turn everything on so we can see it again. And um, we're just going to come back in here and just play a little bit. Now, I want to do some things like um, perhaps overprinting. Now, for a start, I can just click on my layer here and I could just slide that up to the top and swap them around. So, you know, feel free to do that at any stage. See, this one just came out a bit there, so we'll just make sure we drag it up to the top like so, or drag that, then you see it highlights down in the, the bottom. So we can drag it wherever we want. But what I'm going to do is, I could even take that slightly off skew just to be a bit more interesting. So I'm going to click on that graphic just a little bit, and now I'm getting something a little bit more interesting here, which I like the graphic a lot more, just to give it a bit more of a funky look. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come up within this file and I'm just going to look at just my view here and I want to make sure that it's on overprint. So not a view CPU or outline, which gives the outline view, which is just showing the graphics. Great for type or graphics, but just gives the outline view only. We want to go into overprint preview because what that means, if any color, if I want to mix my colors, I'm going to click on this blue here, which is basically already selected, and it's showing it's selected because the, also the color comes up. But I'm going to go to Attributes panel. So if you come down here and let me see, Attributes should be A at the top here. And I want to overprint it. So you click on Overprint. And turn that on or off. We should see the color just overprinting as long as we've got an overprint view here. Now, what I could do is actually um, see that's color, that's the right layer, dot layer. And if I click on that, it says overprint. If I click on my 
yellow layer here, just down here on this one, and um, just click on the file. In fact, I might lock my top one just so I don't, it doesn't get in the way. Then I can just click on it. We've got that highlighted. No overprint color. So if I overprint the yellow, let's see what happens if just drag that yellow up to the top there and see how it's definitely mixing the colors because it's the overprint. Let me take that off and you can see that more clearly. So it's overprinting and you're getting that green. Okay, now that's maybe more the color I want to go with, with this, um, this artwork here. So essentially, I can just go and save this now. So we've created some actually color artwork. Now, just to sort of finally just finish this off, I'm just going to save this as a PDF file, which is going to be good for printing. Now, what I'm going to do um, with my outline gray here, just so I don't want to get um, this as being part of the artwork, which is um, base artwork, what I'm going to do is for the artwork here, just to showcase what I'm putting together, I'm just going to type in um, no print. Now you'll notice that it's also on its own layer, and I've got no print here as well as but um, no print on that. But I can also double click on this layer, and if I want, I can just turn printing off here if I don't want to print at all. But I've just got this here as a bit of an instruction for the printer. Um, obviously, I'd need to um, measure up and make sure that uh, it's in the right place, but it's still just acting as a guide, um, just in order to, to be placed on the right graphic at the right size. So it's just a guide at this stage. Um, to produce the artwork, but anyway, I've got this no print because I don't want it to print, but um, in terms of for the, the artwork here, so they can turn this off, but I want it to be shown for the artwork so they can see. Let's have a look at this. I'm going to go File, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go Save As, and with my artwork here, um, I'm going to now change it to a PDF file, and I'm going to go save and as it comes up here for artwork what I want is I want it to be not any one of these that converted but I need it to be Acrobat 6 or more but I want it to Acrobat 6 so that'll work on for most printers and this will enable layers so if I click on that I can actually get create layers if I'm anything before this you'll see what happens this disappears so I'm onto my layers here, and I just want to create layers from top down, and then I can go through the different output for this. Now I'm in Illustrator default here with my um, settings. What I actually really want is high quality print. So I need to go back, and sometimes you need to just do that. Go back to Acrobat 6, high quality print, because I wanted to maintain the integrity of the colors. Uh, for artwork quality, I'm going to click it down here, being the spot colors I'm bringing in there. I'm going to go to Marks and Bleeds and click on that. Well, I don't know any, want any Marks and Bleeds for this because it's just indicating the graphic at this stage, but I can add all my Marks and Bleeds at this way. And let's see, just Output, that looks good. Advance, um, that looks good. Everything's there. Don't want any security on this. And I'm just going to save the file. Now, if I just come back to the general here, remember? Create layers. I also just want to um, view the PDF after saving. So I'm going to go save PDF. And there it goes. So this is also just making sure that the artwork's going to be great when it's produced. And here we go. And there's my artwork. I'm going to just bring that into view here. And you say, hold it. That's not what I had. Look, these colors don't work. So what we need to do is just come into the tools here. I'll just cancel that for now. Just go into tools. And we just make sure that we've got the print production open. Okay, so you just click on that and that will appear in here. So if I click on this one, there's the artwork. As soon as I go to output preview, It'll give us all the magic about what we want, and there it is how we want it to be viewed. So the artwork's good to go. Now the other thing is here is layers. At any stage, the printer can just go and turn no print off here, and there's just the artwork, and it's all good to go with this cool graphic that I've got, and I can check by just turning off all my unwanted colors there, so I've only got my spot plates as well. So that's how you create some cool, funky, half-done graphics for printing on t-shirts or in fact any other way of printing. And let's just blow this up and I'll just close this for now. 
just to view this all print preview once more just move this out of the way I'm just going to take that larger so we can see it there and move it in put that there just so it's nice and visible for a final view and there's our artwork good to go uh, so thanks for watching, working with half tone screens from full colour artwork into spot colours and great effects for things like t-shirts or any other graphic you want to print.